I'm working on phone line simulator experiments again, and here I have two projects at the same time that I'm looking at. One is using the MT8808 8x8 analog switch matrix. The chip is here on the breadboard, so I'm switching audio signals around. So we're going to look at that. And the other project is this red PCB, a DTMF decoder made with today's sponsor, PCB Way. I previously made this other PCB using all through hole components using an MT8870, but there's some things I needed to improve upon. First, this is a 5 volt chip, so the digital outputs are all 5 volts. And I was using this at 3.3 on an ESP32, so now I'm using the surface mount version 88L70, which runs at 3.3 volts and gives 3.3 volt compatible outputs. Another thing I wanted to change, I only really had a couple of header pins here to get to the phone line. So now I still have header pins, but I also just put an RJ phone jack to make it easier to plug in. And the other change I really needed, this one used a through hole 600 ohm to 600 ohm impedance matching transformer to interface with a phone line. But this part I was getting on eBay or AliExpress and it doesn't really have a part number and I can't find a compatible one with a main distributor to make this easy for other people to just use a bill of materials and order parts. So the surface mount version of the board has a surface mount 600 ohm transformer which is obtainable both on AliExpress or major distributors. So here's the phone line simulator and I have the phone plugged into it so I can pick it up and press touch tones and then the DTMF decoder is also plugged in here on a splitter jack so I can tap into this signal while it's on this simulated phone line and listen to the DTMF tones. When there's valid DTMF tones present, the red LED on the breadboard will be on to show there's a valid signal being detected, and then there's four yellow LEDs to show a binary representation of what button was pressed. And looking at the table here, if we press digit 1, Q4, 3, 2, and 1 outputs are going to be off, 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 and on. And these LEDs are in that same order, so the one on the right is on if I press 1. While I'm holding it down, the red LED is on. And when I release, the data is latched. So if I press a different number, now a different code is showing up, and it's latched until we get a new button press. So the red LED signal would tell the microcontroller it's time to read valid data and then it can go whenever it has time and read this. So basically with all of the key presses from 1 all the way up through 9 and then 0, we basically have a binary counter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. And then the other characters have different combinations. So if I press all of these 1 through 9 and then 0, we should see basically a binary counter counting up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0, and then the other 2. On the schematic, this is mostly a datasheet application circuit, so we have an audio signal coming in, and if there's DTMF tones present, it will decode it, giving 3.3 volt logic out, confirming there's a valid DTMF tone pair present, and what it actually represents. So this is really just meant for prototyping, and if it's going to be used in a more permanent installation, or if it's going to be used on a real phone line, the user will have to do so at their own discretion and make sure they're not violating any regulations or such. For the other part of this experiment with the 8x8 analog switch, if I take the phone off the hook, we're seeing a dial tone now, basically. I'm tapping into the extra audio headers here to bring an audio signal to this analog switch matrix. 
So using the 8x8 analog switch array, we have two banks of eight pins and they can be input output or output input. It's just a signal path being closed when commanded. In this case, what I'm doing is I have, let's say pin Y0 and pin X0 connected to this phone line audio. So the phone audio comes to one side, then I just have a scope probe on the other side. And when I internally connect this node, I can see the phone audio on the scope. If I open this switch and break that connection, I don't get to see the audio on the scope. So I'm using that as a way to test. So in order to make or break that connection, we have X and Y address pins here. What we have to do is set them up with a combination of highs and lows, and then bring the strobe pin high and then low. And then if this data happens to be high, we are instructing a specific node here to be closed. So there's a connection. But at that time when we strobe, if data is zero, it means open that connection and break that switch. So it turns out to go between X and Y zero, it's all zeros on these pins here. So that's easy for a breadboard. I just bring those all to ground. So when I reset this, everything here is open or not connected. If I bring the strobe to one and then back to zero, with all of these grounded, I'm telling it to make a connection between my phone audio and the scope probe. If I want to break that connection, I can just reset the chip again. So right now, this matrix has been reset. If I press a key, there might be a little bit of noise ripple on the scope, but there's nothing passing through. I'm not even using decoupling capacitors on there, and it's all chaos wiring, so I don't mind seeing a little bit of ripple. Now if I press that strobe key, it should connect the DTMF in to the scope probe on the out of the matrix. And now, when I press keys, I can see the audio passing through the matrix. So I'll hold down a button and I will reset the matrix, which should open the path, breaking the connection. Now I will reconnect that path. So up till now, I've been just going from one node to a second node and making a call one way or the other. But if I get multiple nodes, I can have their audio pads routed through a switch and then have something coordinate when one node wants to call another node, or if you want three nodes having a party line, all of those connections can be routed in here and I can have a more realistic multi-node telephone simulation network. So I'll be working on this over the coming months.